Hello and welcome to AC circuit analysis level 2. At this level the problems start getting a little bit more complicated but the main difficulty is the arithmetic of the complex numbers not the circuits themselves. I'll do a few examples. Here, right, we've got a current source up here, a voltage source here and a capacitor there and we need to work out what the current is through the voltage source. Well, we know that this is a perfect ammeter and therefore there is no potential difference across it because it has no impedance. Therefore, we know that this point here in the circuit must be the same potential as this point here in the circuit. They're both at 19 millivolts. We therefore know the potential difference across the capacitor. It's 19 millivolts. If we divide by the impedance of the capacitor, we should get the current flowing through the capacitor. Let's do that. First of all, what is the impedance of this capacitor? You should know by now that the impedance of a capacitor is 1 over J times omega, which is 2 times pi times 500 in this case, times the value of the capacitor, which in this case is 6.8 nanofarads. So that is the impedance of the capacitor. And if I know the impedance of the capacitor, I divide the voltage across the capacitor by the impedance. That would be 19 millivolts at a phase angle of zero, divided by this, which is just the impedance of the capacitor. And that gives me the current through this capacitor. Well, applying Kirchhoff's law to this node of the circuit here, the total current flowing in is the 370 at 90 degrees plus the unknown current. The total current flowing out is the current flowing across this capacitor, which I've just worked out down here. Therefore, this unknown current here must be this current going through the capacitor minus this current here. So that would be X minus 370 nano amps with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Fine. Next. We have a unknown voltage here, but we know the current flowing through that capacitor. Once again, the impedance of that capacitor, 1 over J times omega, 2 times pi times 1000 in this case, times C, 33 nanofarads. That's the impedance of the capacitor. We know there are 750 nanoamps flowing through it. Therefore, the voltage across that capacitor must be 750 nanoamps times the impedance Y. And that is the voltage across this capacitor from this side to this side. Now, have to be a little bit careful here because the voltage that we're trying to measure is the voltage across this voltage source plus the voltage across this capacitor from here to here. That's from this point to that point. This current is flowing that way, so which means this must be the higher potential, that must be the lower potential, so that's okay. We're going from the lower potential to the higher potential going this way, and the lower potential to the higher potential going this way, so we can just add them together. So it's the answer that I've got currently in the X box down here, plus this voltage source here, 18 millivolts at 90 degrees. Right, is it worth doing one more? Um, yeah, let's do just one more. This time, what current should this ammeter read? Well, again, we know the voltage across this capacitor it's just 280 millivolts, so if we divide that by the impedance of this capacitor, we must get the current flowing through the capacitor. Let's try that. 280 millivolts at naught degrees phase, that's that voltage, divided by the impedance of this capacitor, which is 1 divided by, you'll see how I'm being careful with the brackets in case I get confused, J times omega, 
which is 2 times pi times 2 kilohertz in this case, times the capacitance, which is 22 nanofarads. That, then, is the current flowing down here through this capacitor. Apply Kirchhoff's current law to this node in the circuit here. The total current flowing in is the 18 microamps plus the unknown current. The total current flowing out is the current through the capacitor. So, the unknown current here must be the current through the capacitor minus this 18 microamps. We've just worked out the current through the capacitor. That's down here. So all we need to do is subtract this current here, and we must be left with the unknown current. So, y minus 18 microamps, and we're done. That's it. It does take a bit of practice to get used to the complex numbers, but hopefully you're beginning to see that once you get the hang of it, it's really not too bad.